Was I able to use up any products during quarantine or has my empties been kind of empty? Stay tuned to find out. Hi everyone, how's everybody doing? It's been a while since I filmed a video. I have to admit the past couple of weeks, uh, even though we're still under quarantine here in New York City, the past couple of weeks have been quite intense. I have had to leave my house to help my mom with some things. It has definitely taken a little bit of a toll on my routine, if you can call it that. Obviously just being home, you know, is not much of a routine, I guess, but I'm trying to keep somewhat of a routine. So I wanted to jump on and do a very overdue empties. I've been wanting to do them every two months, as I mentioned in my very first empties video. So my first empties video was for products for January and February, and this is my March and April. And even though I'm filming this on May 16th, I have not cheated, and I have separated my March and April empties into this little bin right here, and I am keeping my May empties already in a separate spot. So it's very easy to lose track, especially when every day is pretty Pretty much the same but i'm trying my best to make sure that i kind of stay true to what i said i would do so i am just going to like i did last time run through the products that i have finished up this month it's well these two months march and april i have to admit it hasn't been all that much because i'm home and i've been less motivated honestly to do pretty much anything in the self-care department i really was hoping to do more but it has not been working out that way so let's jump in no particular order i'm just gonna grab things easy one Shiseido facial cotton youtube got me hooked on this years ago and i'm still hooked on this however now i seek it out at tj maxx they've upped the price I haven't been to one obviously in a while they've been closed for the current global crisis but even before i was not shopping since january because of my no buy so i haven't bought one of these since december and i think at that point they were 3.99 so four dollars a pack as opposed to three dollars a pack which is what they used to be this is the small one by the way for those of you that are wondering there is a smaller size that even sephora sells and this is 40 sheets as opposed to i guess 100 maybe so yeah whenever i see these whether it's the 40 sheets or the 100 at tj maxx and i'm not on a no buy i usually pick up a couple so i don't used one of these up and i already have another one that is almost gone so you'll i'm sure see that in my next empties as well hair care this is this is a cut up version of the too cool for school egg remedy hair pack and this is the conditioner they don't actually call it a conditioner they just say a three-in-one step salon care intensive hair repair i use this as a conditioner but it basically says it's an egg remedy hair pack egg hair treatment mask providing hydration and nourishment and protein for damaged hair i almost always use hair masks in place of conditioners unless i have conditioners lying around so i usually shampoo and then i put a treatment like this in my hair while i do everything else that i need to be doing in the bath tub shower situation and then i wash this off at the end i liked it i like too cool for school products i especially love their face masks i liked it did I absolutely love and adore this product and am I gonna go out and spend 20 plus dollars on this or whatever this costs at Sephora if they're even still selling this because I haven't really been keeping up? Probably not but if I see this again at TJ Maxx for $10 which is I think how I got a hold of this to begin with would I buy it once I'm out of everything else? Quite possible unless I find something else that I love so much more and that blows me out of the water. Honestly as far as hair care I don't have right or die products so uh, as i say that though the one ride or die is this aveda scalp benefits balancing shampoo with burdock root i've been using this for years this was recommended to me by a hairstylist at an aveda salon in manhattan in new york city and because i have a very dry scalp and because i have psoriasis and if you see some of it near the front of my hairline i apologize i didn't really want to be putting crap just to cover it up because as it is it's really sensitive and irritated at the moment and it has been because we haven't really been getting sun and that usually helps a bit. But yeah, this definitely helps. I use this up towards the beginning, I think, of these two months and I certainly miss it. I have a bunch of shampoos and conditioners that according to my no buy, I'm supposed to use up first. I have to be honest, if my skin condition gets any worse than it already is, my scalp condition that is, I might have to repurchase one of these and that's fine. That to me will not be breaking my 
know my rules because if it is a health condition, if it is actually preventing me from having a healthy scalp when I know I can manage it better, then that's okay. I think I'm allowed. By the way, I'm having a first mojito of the season. The sun is still out, although it's starting to go down on me. I was really hoping to catch the bright sunshine for filming today, but it's already like 6.30 at night. So that's not happening. But such a life. Okay, let's go with probably the most expensive product I used up in the past two months. And again, it's a TJ Maxx purchase. I mean, every time I say, oh, really expensive product, I don't want you guys to think that I'm out there spending hundreds of dollars on some of these things that I'm showing you that cost that much. With me, I've said it before, I'll say it again, it's always TJ Maxx to the rescue. That should really be like my motto. And and when I say TJ Maxx, obviously if I get it at Marshalls, to me it's kind of the same thing. I'm not gonna sit around and keep track of where I get what. It's one brand, it's one company. They very often have the same stock. So this is the Erno Laszlo Formula 3-9 or 3-9, and it's a repair serum. And they just say to apply the serum immediately after toning all over your face. It is a one ounce and I think I paid 30 to $40 for this. I can't remember. It's been a little while. This is not the first bottle of this I've used. I got a set by Erna Laszlo, also, of course, at TJ Maxx. And it was like a starter pack. It had a moisturizer, which I loved. In fact, I think it's a moisturizer that, oh, somebody here on YouTube mentioned within the past couple of months. Gosh, is it Thela? Taylor Wynn, I think that's her name. I hope that's her name. If it's not, I am so sorry. But I think she mentioned the moisturizer by Erna Laszlo that I have tried before. And I do have to say, I very much enjoyed it as well. I'm not sure it's worth the price. She said it's worth the price for her skin. Great. It's not, in my opinion, worth the price because all of Erna Laszlo's products are really up there. We're talking high, high, high end skincare. I think they sell this at Sephora, but I know before that, years ago when I was in college, they sold it only at stores like Bergdorf Goodman or Barney's, which is no longer around, like really high end luxury retailers. So I want to say full price. This is like upwards of 95, if not more. And I have to admit, as much as I like the moisturizer, this is fine. It's okay. It didn't really do all that much though for my skin. Like I did not, for that price, I expect angels to be pulling up my face on little gold strings and giving me invisible facelift. This, this didn't do any of that. It kept my skin moisturized-ish. I would not, I'm not even sure, honestly, I would at this point repurchase it from TJ Maxx for 30 to $40. So that's, I think that's saying a lot. I think I would definitely repurchase that moisturizer if I found it at TJ Maxx for 30 or $40 instead of the 60 to 100 or whatever it is. But I definitely would not repurchase this serum. I think I would prefer to try something else. There's that. Speaking of expensive products, this also came in a little set from TJ Maxx. It was a cleanser and a little cloth. I believe I bought the set for $13 because this was something I bought towards the end of 2019. So those products, of course, I remember a lot better. This has, it's clean because I wash everything, but it still has the lingering scent. And I was trying to figure out how to describe the scent to you guys. It's very herbal. It almost has like a herbal slash medicinal scent to it. Almost like that eucalyptus -y it's not peppermint, but it's like, it's almost like that Vicks vapor rub slightly reminds me of that. Like it has that, if you inhale it, you almost feel like your nasal passages are starting to open up a little bit scent. Now it's interesting. So this is a cleansing balm and I love cleansing balms. And I liked this. I like this a lot. This is one of those cult classic products that I remember hearing about probably 10 years ago. And I remember so many people that were into high-end skincare already back then and having channels here on YouTube or actually magazines that have, you know, usually their monthly page of beauty products that they recommend. I remember this being a very, very big cult favorite product before I guess a lot of the other balms came out. There was a bunch of cleansing balms. This product, I was so excited to finally try. I saw this at TJ Maxx and I was like, oh yes, I really want to try this because I have been hearing about this for a decade, if not more. And I have to say, I liked it. What I think made this slightly product for me as opposed to 
yes product is inside the balm they were like these little granules almost like little scrubbies and i guess it's meant to cleanse and exfoliate at the same time and in theory that sounds lovely and for most of my face that was lovely however i like to use a balm for everything including my eyes and even though it did not irritate so that's a plus i do have to say it did not irritate even with those little granules i just felt a little weary of using it for that reason i'm sure it's just purely psychological i just had a slight discomfort with putting something on my gentle eyelids and under eyes and you know right in here that could scrub and possibly irritate and scratch and it didn't so that's good but i don't know i just i'm just so accident prone i feel like when it comes to certain things like that that i just kept waiting for it to do something that it's not supposed to and i don't think for that reason i would repurchase this just because i think i would be a little scared of it you know again if i see it at tj maxx at a really great discount maybe maybe if i was running out of cleansing balms at that time and there were no sales coming up and i really didn't want to spend the approximately 30 to 35 dollars that some of my favorite cleansing balms cost maybe i would try it like if i could get the big size for less than that but this is such an expensive product that i don't think that would happen i mean this is a teeny tiny 0.7 of a fluid ounce size and yes it came in a little gift pack with the cloth but it was 13 dollars at tj maxx so that leads me to believe that probably this is a $25 gift pack that I got. So if you're getting a mini mini for $25, then I assume a full like three ounce or two ounce or whatever size they normally are is probably going to cost upwards of 50, 60 bucks. Don't quote me on that. I did not look up the price of the original Evelom, what the full size price would be, but I have a feeling it's quite up there. So again, this is another eh product like i enjoyed it i'm glad i got to try it i have always wanted to try it but now i'm like oh, okay i haven't been missing out on all that much now we have another hair care product this is the igk coconut oil gel Let's see if i can sort of hold it up and because i cut my products i know this is not the most beautiful presentation i'm sorry but it's real life and i really don't want to waste products and i also don't want to come here and first show you guys things and then go back and finish using it that's just too much hassle and i don't think any of us really need that so this i used as like a styling gel basically because it's a coconut oil gel i didn't love it it's interesting because this product left my hair still a bit frizzy but very very touchable and currently what i'm using and today i didn't have time to actually dry my hair i just ran out of the shower put a little product into it and got right into teaching and working but this one and granted i've already been playing with it all day so it's a lot frizzy Easier. whatever i'm currently using is making my curls a bit crusty which i really never 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 like yes it defines them but i don't like the crusty whereas this i feel like didn't do enough i mean i'm not saying i want it at all crusty but this almost felt like just my natural frizzy hair kind of like what you see back here because i think i missed putting some product in here this morning where it's just like a frizzy mess with no curls just limp natural air dried hair which i just don't like I know other people would probably love to have at least wavy hair. The grass is always greener in somebody else's yard. I'm aware of that. But I really, really dislike my hair when I just leave it to air dry with no products or anything in it. I always have to put something in my hair. I don't put a lot. I'm very, very, very light handed with the amount of hair products I put in because I'm always afraid that I'm going to get those crusty curls. But this, no matter how much I would put, it didn't really do much. So so mm, mm, I have yet to find, honestly, any sort of holy grail hair products. Because I have such a sensitive scalp, I do not just go using anything. And I know that this also may be like not proper philosophy because I'm sure higher end hair products have just as many chemicals as lower end hair products like drugstore hair products. But when I was about 16, a specific I think it was L'Oreal shampoo actually set off all the scalp problems that I have had for the rest of my life. And granted, it could have been coincidence, but in my mind, I have, I think, just settled on the fact that it was whatever stuff I was using from the drugstore. And I specifically remember it was a L'Oreal... 
I'm pretty sure it was Allure. I think it was like called Vivo or Viva or some line. And it was brand new at the time. And I was so excited as a teenager to try it. And I had used like half the bottle. And little by little, as I was using it, I started to see like more dandruff, more problems. And then eventually it's, you know, my psoriasis started acting up. And I know that that's an age where that can happen in general. So I'm sure a lot of it was coincidental, but I just had a feeling that that may have triggered me to start having my scalp issues that I have never been able to cure since even though I've tried a gajillion medicated shampoos and whatnots but certain products work to at least calm down the irritation and I'm always extremely careful of what I put on my hair I never put styling products all the way up so that they touch my scalp for these same reasons so at least like the bottom part of my hair I want to look nice and this just didn't really do it for me all in Rickson, the Clean Truth Foaming Cleanser. I had an um, advent calendar from Ole and Rickson and I'm little by little using up a bunch of the products. I really like this cleanser. I feel like I've used this a few years back in the past and I disliked it. And for some reason this time around, I thought it was a great success. It has that light orangey scent that Ole and Rickson Truth Line is known for. I do have to say I flew through this. So that is the one downside, I guess, if you could call it that. It was a liquid and then when you pump it out, it came out as this really fluffy foam and usually foaming cleansers can be drying this was not at all i enjoyed it if it comes in some sort of really cool gift pack at a discount i would use it up again this is still in my shower but it is on its way to being done and it is a cleansing bar so it is impossible to show you guys a non-existing cleansing bar once it's totally done i figured i would just talk about it because i was about to throw away the box and then i realized i won't be able to show you the product unless i have the box this is a cerave hydrate cleanser bar for dry to normal skin I never like soap bars for my body for my face I just find them so drying guys I have to say this one this one's really nice it does not dry out my skin it's easy to use it's simple it doesn't have a scent there's really not much I can tell you about it because it's like one of those products that has absolutely no bells and whistles to it it's a bar of soap but it's in a very very gentle bar of soap that is perfect for exactly what they say dry to normal sensitive skin it is hydrating it cleans nice, no frills. I use this usually like not when my face is really congested and I need something hardcore, but just for everyday gentle cleansing if I'm in the shower and you know, I have about two, three cleansers in there that I rotate through and that's one of them. Very nice, I have been really liking it. Ooh. This one breaks my heart. I had a tiny little bottle of Good Jeans left by Sunday Riley. I love this product. I've loved this product for years. I've only had, I think, two or three bottles of it that, you know, I would save and save and save and treat myself to during the Sephora VIB Rouge sales at the time because I was a Rouge for a few years. I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen this. This was so hyped up. And then Sunday Riley, of course, kind of became a bit of a canceled brand because there were these, uh, issues where a lot of their employees were told to post reviews for specific products and I feel like Sunday Riley because of that hasn't really been talked about as much since I think they still make some amazing products I've only tried this and I love the Luna oil and I've tried uh is it the Tidal moisturizer I had a little sample of that which I really enjoyed there's other products that I still on my wish list. I still would love to try one day, but they're expensive. They're just too expensive. And with my budget and what I do as a concert pianist and a piano teacher, I can't. I, I live in New York City as it is, you know, I barely make ends meet and buying a hundred and whatever, I can't even remember. It's like $115 or something worth of good jeans right now is just out of my reach. Would I repurchase it if I could afford it? Yes, but I can't. Okay, number seven, Lift and Illuminate Triple Action Serum. Again, one of these that I've cut up. I like the number seven line for skincare. Is it amazing? Can, can you ever compare this? No. No, not even close. But for maintenance, like for daily maintenance and just to make sure you're treating your skin to something that's moisturizing and hopefully doing just at least a little bit for preventative measures, I like it. I've tried a few serums from number seven. They have one, I wish I remembered what it was called. I think it's like a white 
bottle with blue lettering on it as opposed to this blue and silver and I think I like that one more I don't know why I had this I don't remember where I got it probably Ulta probably some sale but I enjoyed using it up and if in the future the number seven products happen to fall into my possession I will gladly give them a try we are down to just some of these sheet masky ish products so these you guys saw in my last empty Teas. I've been trying to use them up. These are the public white hyaluronic, hyaluronate, whatever mask of the fresh masks. I got a huge 10 pack or maybe even a 20 pack. I can't remember a TJ Maxx a while back on clearance. I like them. Are they out of this world? No, but I enjoyed them. And especially for the clearance price I got them for where they probably ended up being like a dollar a mask. I thought they were great. And I can't remember if I have one more already in my maze empties or if these were the last three. I want to say these were the last three so now i've moved on to other masks that are next on the have expired or about to expire train and on that train were these two guys these are those really funny animal masks i remember these were quite popular for a hot minute here on youtube these are by uh the creme shop but i think there were a few companies that made these so these were little tigers and um i have to say do they really moisturize eh it's more of a novelty product it's fun it's fun to use it's it's hilarious honestly like this would be an instagram worthy sort of thing it didn't really do much for my skin yeah yeah on the other hand, what did do a lot for my skin and the masks that I really, really enjoy are these Dr. Jart masks. I haven't tried, honestly, a bad one from this line and this sort of packaging. So this specific one was a firming solution. I got this at TG Maxx for $4. I think originally these are about 8 to 10 in Sephora if they are still selling Dr. Jart. I think they are. It's a good cheap mask. It was hydrating. I don't know about firming, but you do feel like your skin is a little more plump, a little more healthy looking, which is probably why it also looks a little firmer. So, and then another one that I really like, and I think this was my last one, is this Karuna antioxidant face mask. I gotta check, I gotta see if I have any more of these. And if I do, I gotta use them up because these expired back in November. And even though we're in May, I was not gonna let this go to waste. So I think I used this up in March and it was still great because these are sealed, so I don't don't really see what can possibly go wrong unless you wait really really a long time like a few years these karuna masks i like the texture of them they're so soft they have so much of that liquid seeping into your skin they lay comfortably on your face there's like enough space to kind of fold them over and make them stay on your face same for these dr jarts whereas you know some of these cheaper ones they're smaller they're a little bit trickier to stay on your face so definitely these more high-end masks you can tell but i don't discriminate especially if i pay like a dollar for some of those cheaper ones this is another erin Laszlo, and this is the soothe and calm hydrogel mask so this is it's more of a jelly and it comes in two sides like you've got one for the bottom half of your face one for the forehead i actually really like this so unlike the serum which i didn't really think did anything i think these are very nice i don't think they're nice for the price Ooh, that rhymes nice for the price i don't i don't think they're worth the price but i think for the tj max price of i think 12.99 for the four masks which is what i got these for instead of like 30 dollars or whatever these are normally for four masks if not more i will do the calculations of what these products cost me versus what they cost for price like i did in my first video so when i edit i will put that in and you guys will see that all on the screen i don't think this would be worth the full price but i think if i were to see these again at a discount i would jump on that once my no buy is over or i have no more masks depending on what comes first most likely once my no buy is over. All right, and then I used up these two treatments. I did two treatments. So I guess I did do a little bit of self-care during the quarantine. I tried, I really tried, but it was it was tough going there for a while. This first half of May, it's as if it hadn't, I mean, April flew by and May is really on its way as well. So I, I don't know how my empties are gonna look next time around either. I feel like they're dwindling in the amount of products 
product as we go throughout the year because I guess I started the year all excited with the new YouTube channel and I'm going to use up all these products and I'm going to have all these mini reviews and it's going to be just so great. And then Rona rolled in and took over New York City and yeah, but anyway. I used up the Ole Henriksen Power Bright 3-step and the Ole Henriksen Power Peel 3-step. This one is the second one I'm using. I actually already talked about it in my first empties. So short summary, I was skeptical to use this because I feel like these are old in my collection. I was really afraid they were going to break me out or do some crazy stuff on my face. Thankfully, none of that happened. And in fact, I really enjoyed this. I think I have a few more of these. I can't remember if the box I have has six of these or four of these, maybe six. So that means I've got four more treatments to go and I'm not mad at that. And I might in the future, again, once my no buy is over, where I've run out of all of these treat yourself special things that I like to do once in a while, I might repurchase this. I think they have an updated version of this in the new packaging, because this is a few years old. Ole Henriksen no longer looks like this. They look more streamlined and clean like this. So this would be probably like an all blue package with none of this stripey stuff. I liked the old packaging, so I don't know why they changed it, but hey, companies need to reinvent themselves and that's fine. Same, this is no longer looking like this. This would probably be more uniform colored. This had the Truth Sugar Glow Polishing Mask, the Truth 25% Vitamin C Concentrate, and the Pure Truth Melting Cleanser. So what you did was you first went through step one, where you applied this to clean damp skin and you left it on for five to 10 minutes. Then they said to add warm water and gently massage in a circular motion for 30 seconds and then rinse clean pat dry so it's like a scrub but it has like oils in it so that's why you first leave it on because i guess it acts also a little bit like a mask then you would take step two you would apply this to dry skin this was the 25 percent vitamin c concentrate leave on for two to three minutes the treatment will begin to dry down slightly do not rinse off follow with step three which is applied directly on top of the 25 percent vitamin c concentrate and blend evenly over the face do not add water expect a pleasant tingling as the treatment is activated leave on for 10 to 15 15 minutes to remove dampen the complexion sponge there's like this circular little crappy sponge but hey whatever it works which is included or a washcloth with lukewarm water and swipe gently to remove all product i was worried that the vitamin c because this is an older product would not really do anything and you know maybe it didn't but again just like with this one my skin afterwards did feel refreshed it felt soft it felt supple it felt like i've done something nice to it whether it really worked the way it would have two years ago or however old this is i have no way of saying i can't get a time machine and go back in time and try this on time i'm making do with what i have i will continue using it again i have a whole pack of these so i have another three to five of them depending on how many are in there that's all i got for my empties that's two months worth of what i've been trying i do have some makeup updates coming up i have some makeup that hopefully you guys will see in my next empties and also i have some exciting news for my my upcoming project pan which I was supposed to film at the end of April and I'm actually about to film that right after this video so you guys will see both these, these videos probably already closer to the end of May because it does take me quite a few days to edit I am sorry I know May has been really really crappy as far as me posting videos I really was hoping to do better but I'm doing my best over here and that's just going to have to be good enough for right now. I think every single one of you that has subscribed in the months of March and April, I've gained a few subscribers at the time that I'm filming this. I am at 80 subscribers, which for me is so exciting. And of course, my first big goal is 100. I'm already thinking of maybe doing a little giveaway for my first 100 subscribers. I don't know anything about how that works, so I would have to research that and see what is allowed on YouTube and what is not. If you guys know please please let me know in the comments let me know if you've ever won a giveaway from other creators like how that process worked and what you think works best what you usually enjoy in giveaways just so I can kind of start educating myself in that department since if I do that that would be my first one and I really like to so if I can figure out the logistics I will definitely make it happen since I'm on a no buy I'm gonna have to get creative about my giveaway but I am allowed to buy products for other people so I might include some products that have been unused in my own collection as well as maybe let you guys choose an item that I can actually purchase for you. But that's, these are all for now dreams, dreams 
in my head I have to first even reach 100 subscribers so if you are new to my channel please please consider subscribing I would absolutely love that please consider checking out my other videos please consider sharing with your friends that would enjoy this kind of content and that would enjoy watching another newer beauty channel that is focused on using things in their collection because I am on a year-long no buy even throughout this pandemic even though i've been tempted to treat myself with some new goodies that is it for me for today i cannot wait to see you guys in my next video i wish you a wonderful wonderful day and until next time bye how am i keeping track of this am i keeping track of what i've already talked about and what i haven't my desk you guys should see my desk my desk is a hot mess. So how am I keeping track of this? Who knows? All right.